Hey guys, it's Sarthuk from FTC Team 979 for Wizards.exe. Uh, welcome to the next part of our Vision Spellbook series. Um, and in this video, I want to talk about how we can use Doge CV to detect these stones over here. Now, this might be a little similar, um, you think, to the previous video we did on detecting the Sky Stones, but we're going to use a detector that's built for detecting just the regular stones without the Vision targets. So um, I'm going to go ahead, and this builds off what we kind of covered in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that yet, make sure you um, just watch that quickly before watching this one. Although you should be able to get the gist of it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up the Android Studio project I had last time. Um, and this is the Skystone detector example that we uh, used in the last video. Now, um, we're going to want to use the stone detector that's built into the Doge CV library instead of the sky stone detector. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, since a lot of the stuff is going to be the same, I'm just going to make a copy of this file over here. And I'm just going to paste it, uh, just paste it back into the team code package. Except instead of calling it sky stone, I'm just going to call it stone detector example. So it's going to make that copy. The first thing I'll change is the op mode name so we don't have duplicate uh, names in the op mode register. And then the most obvious thing we have to fix is over here. We have to change sky stone detector to stone detector. Stone detector, yep, from the Doge CV library. And I'm just going to rename this variable stone detector. Uh, now you'll see a couple of errors come up, but we'll fix those along the way as we go. So a lot of this stuff can stay the same, um, all of this over here, since that's initializing the camera. But we want to change um, sky stone detector to stone detector. And the same goes for over here. And instead of passing in the sky stone detector to the phone camera, we want to pass in the stone detector. So you can go ahead and copy and paste that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate the telemetry of the camera and the telemetry of the detector. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two lines now. Whoops. Uh, delete those two lines. So that should fix all of our errors to begin with. Now we want to start using the stone detector. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is open up the stone detector class so we can see what's going on inside. So if you scroll up over here, hover over stone detector and control click, it will open up the Java file that is the stone detector. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that we can't type anything in here because this file is read only since it's from a uh, JR um, uh, package. So we won't be able to uh, retype any of this without copying and pasting the file which I'll actually show you how to do later in this video. But for now, let's just take a look at what's going on here. Um, the main thing I want to highlight is that you see this variable over here, uh, stones to find. You'll see that it's assigned to two, which means that the detector is going to be looking for groups of two stones together, and it's going to return its positions back. And now you'll see over here that it, since we have, since it's looking for two stones, we're going to have a list of positions. So over here, um, we're gonna have, there are two different ways of accessing that information, um, which we're going to um, use uh, to get the two positions of the stones to begin with. So I'm going to go back into our example class, and what I'm going to type in here is um, if stone detector dot is detected, and if you do that, um, It'll just make sure that all of our operations are valid and won't throw any errors because we'll always make sure that we have some stones in the uh, camera frame before proceeding. Um, one thing I bet is going to happen is that if you install Doge CV early on, you might not see this is detected method pop up. Um, I just had this issue. So um, what I did to resolve it was if you go into your team code build.release.gradle file, um, you have to make sure that this version is up to date. So I just changed it. You can see in my git changes, I changed it from two to four. So if you install Doge CV early on and you're not seeing the is detected method, just make sure this line is up to date. You can check the Doge CV GitHub repository for that information. But um, for this video, you should be okay using 2020.4-alpha um, for um, getting all the methods that we need. So that's just something to keep an eye out. And every time the Doge CV library updates, you can update your library uh, locally just by changing the version and this in this line over here, which is kind of cool and easy to do. So just something I wanted to point out. Anyway, um, what we want to do over here is to detect the stones. Uh, we have to get the list of stones available to us. So um, 
I'm just gonna make a for loop real quick. Um, so, and the for loop is gonna operate based on how many uh, stones it sees. So we can say stone detector dot found rectangles, which is the list of the found positions we have, and then we can use the dot size method. And then what we can do is, um, we'll just increment i each time. And then what I want to do is, oh, looks like we have, oh, whoops, I want to say i is less than this. There we go. So what I want to do is, um, I want to say, I want to print out the telemetry for each of the positions. So we can do uh, telemetry dot add data. Uh, we'll say stone, and I'm just going to add uh, i plus 1 on there which will show which number of stone we're looking at. Are we looking at stone one or stone two? And then after that, I'm going to say um, stone detector dot found rectangles. I'm going to get the uh, current element that we're looking at. And then I'm going to, and we could use the X and Y functions, but just for uh, brevity and conciseness, I'm going to use the two string method, which should print out the X, Y coordinate on our screen. Um, so we can try this out, but um, I already know that there's going to be an error because sometimes, uh, just because of how fast the camera is looping, uh, we might run into an index out of bounds exception. That's when you're trying to access elements that aren't in this list. So to prevent that, uh, we can just put this in a try catch. And then the catch, you just want to say uh, exception E. And then if that is the case, what we can do is we can just say telemetry dot add data and then we can say um, stones and then not detected so that should give us some information about um, how the stones are uh, being looked at on the screen so what you can do is um, just make sure everything is good especially the op mode name so we don't have any duplicates and you can go ahead and download that onto your robot controller phone so while that's downloading, I'm just going to pull up my robot controller and driver station phones so that you guys can see what's going on. And so what I'm going to show, um, hopefully, is the XY position we can kind of get on the two stones. Um, you'll see I have these two stones over here. I'm just going to put them on the desk in front of me and we'll run those together. Now, uh, what you can use the XY information for is determining uh, where stones are relative to your robot and your camera. Um, that way you should be able to um, identify any locations or potentially if you have mechanisms that can automatically align to um, the stone, like an intake for example, if you can have an intake that automatically adjusts its position uh, based on where a stone is, it might be to your benefit to use this detector to identify uh, what direction to point in, and you can use that XY information. I'm actually going to go back into Android Studio while this is taking a long time to download, but I'll show just a couple things. Um, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but instead of using the found rect uh, the two string method, um, we're not going to go into too much detail into into the other methods in this video. But what you could do is you could use like the dot. Um, you could use a dot x or the dot y. You can see the list of them over here. And the height and width might be of some use uh, to you, depending on what you're trying to do. But mainly it's just going to be the x, y information and maybe the area, which is the product of the height and the width. And so what you're going to do is you could use those pieces of information to identify different locations um, that the stone is in. But that's all available for you guys to use, but I'm just going to show just how to get this up and running in the meantime. And so I'm just going to wait while all this is downloading onto my robot controller phone. Alright, so it looks like our app is ready to go. So I'm just going to pull back up my robot uh, controller and driver station phones. Um, I'm using a wireless stream on TeamViewer, so it's going to look a little laggy on your screen. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on. So on my driver station screen, I'm going to go to the stone detector op mode. can initialize it. And before I press play, you should be able to see how it's analyzing the two different stones together. And how it's identifying two stones at a time. So I'm just going to go ahead and press play. And on the driver station phone, you will see that 
um, you, we're getting the information of the stone. So you can see for stone one, um, it's flickering on and off, but uh, we can see that it's like around 180, 190 ish. And it's also giving us its height and width. And for the stone two, you can see kind of the same information um, that's on the screen. Let me back up my camera just a little bit so we can get both stones in the frame. And you'll see that the results are a little bit more consistent. Now, one of the issues that we're having is that it's trying to identify two stones, and that making it, that's making it jump around a little bit. And if it only sees one stone, it's going to think that there are no groupings of two stones together, in which case it's going to return us um, no data points, which is not ideally what we want. So I want to modify the stone detector to look for only one stone at a time. So um, what we're going to do is if you uh, switch your Android um, view menu to project, open up external libraries, and scroll down to the Doge CV library, which is this one right over here. And you can open up it, open it up, and go to detectors, Skystone, and and what we want to do is copy the stone detector class, and paste it into our team code folder for now. If you have a different directory you want to point, uh, put it in, that works too. But I'm just going to put it in here. And so that's going to open it up. And I'm just going to change stones to find from two to one. There we go. And what we're going to do in here is to make sure we're using the right class, I'm going to delete the stone detector import statement over here then it should automatically use the stone detector that's in the team code folder. If I control click on this, it'll open up the file that has one stone to find, which is exactly what we want. So um, that said, I'm just going to re-download this onto my robot controller phone. And what should happen is if I have one stone at a time, it should be able to identify that. Whereas in the previous version, if we only had one stone going on on the screen, it would return a null set since it was looking for two stones together. Um, that's what I found just based on some of the testing I did. So go ahead and download that onto your robot controller phone and we'll see um, how it works out. All right, so our um, app should have downloaded by now. So I'm just gonna go ahead, open up my um, streams for the phones and go ahead and run the stone detector off mode. So we'll wait for this to initialize, and you'll see that um, the stone detector is choosing this one stone. If you press play, it's just returning that stone one. And although it's jumping between some of the things on my desk, um, unfortunately, but it's showing the X, Y position for that um, stone. So you can see that over there, it's jumping around a bit. Uh, let's see if I turn this light off, if we get some better results. It's a little better, but still. So it's going to jump around a little bit, but you can see how you can use the stone detector to um, identify its position. So you can see over here, we have the X and the Y position. And it's actually pretty consistent. It's around 130, 120, and around 80 for the Y value. So that looks pretty solid, I think. So hopefully you got that working. Um, I'm just going to stress again that instead of using the two string method, if you need integer values for the X, Y coordinates, um, you can replace that method. I'll actually do a quick example just to show you guys. But you can replace this um, to string uh, with a dot x. And if we just duplicate this, copy and paste it, we can make this a y value. And I'm just going to update the uh, telemetry statements over here to x and y so we know what's going on. And I'm just going to go ahead and download it. But we should be able to get the x and y information just like that, except instead of using the toString method, we'll actually be accessing the variables, which is useful in the cases that you need to be able to compare integer data um, and do some sort of mathematical calculations over there. All right, that looks like it's about to f finish installing. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my robot controller phone and driver stage streams once again. And I'm just going to bring the stone onto my desk. And let's try running that program. So I'm going to do the stone detector op mode again, initialize it. 
and we can press play and you'll see that the x and y values are being displayed individually um, just as they would with the two string methods so we're getting the same type of values back so um, hopefully uh, you're able to get that working once again and it can be used in a variety of different ways um, and both i guess you could use in the autonomous but also the teleop period for any alignment mechanisms that you may have um, for your robot but that wraps up this video um, hopefully you were able to get the stone detector up and running um, alongside the sky stone detector that we went in the last video. And um, as of right now, it should get you in a good place to understand how to use the Doge CV library um, and what's available to you. Um, we'll, be, we'll still keep putting out videos on how to use the Doge CV library for a couple different things and a couple different game elements um, as new versions of the library are released. You can keep track of that by just periodically checking the Doge um, CV website. So if you just Google Doge CV, it should be one of the first links that pops up. And you'll know that a new version has come out by uh, just seeing when was the last time the GitHub repository was updated. So I'm just gonna wait for this page to load so I can show you guys. I don't know why my computer, there we go. So you can see that sometimes uh, so this was just a readme update, that's not anything significant. Um, but like over here, there there was a variable change and before there were some methods added. So you just want to make sure that you're updating that. And the latest version of the code should be listed right over here. You see I talked about this earlier, 2020.4-alpha. Just make sure you stay up to date with that. And if you ever do have to change it, just change it in your Gradle files and resync. And everything should be good to go. Um, but if you guys have any questions about this video or anything else, just please be sure to email us at wizards.exe at gmail.com or just uh, leave us a comment in the video and we'll be sure to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you have any, any, other, any ideas for other videos you'd like to see us make, please be sure to let us know in the comments or you can also send us an email. I hope you're able to get uh, your detector and vision systems up and running. And stay tuned for more videos in our Vision Spellbook. Thanks for watching.